Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to split text in cells with formulas. So this is the third video in a series where we're looking at how to split text. In the first video, we looked at how to do that with Power Query. Then we looked at the text to columns feature of Excel. And now in this video, we're going to look at how to split text with formulas. So in this example here, we have this full name column and we want to split it out into first name and last name. So this is the end result here that we're going to get to. On this formulas uh, sheet over here, I have uh, just the full names and this is what we'll work with. And I'll make this file available for free download and put a link in the description below so you can download it and follow along. Now I'm going to explain how to do this with formulas and then at the end of the video, I'll share some of the pros and cons of this technique versus using Power Query or text to columns. So we're going to use a few different functions here within our formulas. We're going to learn the left function, the right function, also search and the length function. So a lot of great stuff to learn here with formulas. The first thing we're going to do is just extract the first name here from the full name column. For that, we're going to use the left function. So we're going to start by typing equals and then left. As you can see, left returns the specified number of characters from the start of the text string. So we'll tab into this. Now left just has two arguments. The first is the text. And in this case, we'll just select cell A2. This is the text that we want to evaluate. And then the second argument is the number of characters. So we'll type a comma here. Now you can, this is just expecting a number. So we could just type a five in here for now, close the parentheses and hit enter. And that's going to return the first five characters of the text string in column A. Since I'm using an Excel table, the formula is automatically filled down. And as you can see here, this only returns the correct result in some of the rows uh, because not every name, not every first name here is five characters long. So we need a way to modify this to make it more dynamic, make this number five more dynamic. And we can do that with the search function. So I'm going to first uh, type this search function over here in this cell and then we'll combine it with the left function. So we'll type equals search and search returns the number of characters at which a specific character or text string is found and it reads it from left to right. As you can see, it's not case sensitive. There's also the find function, which does the same thing, but it is case sensitive. In this case, it doesn't matter, but we'll just use the search function. So we'll tab into search. Now search has three arguments. The first is the find text and this is the text that we want to find. And in this case, we want to find the space between the first and last names because each of these full names has a space between the first and last name. So to reference a space here, we're going to put uh, the characters in quotation marks. So we'll type quotation marks, a space, and then quotation marks again. So there's a space between there. Then we're going to type a comma. And within text, this argument is the text that we're going to search in. And that's going to be, again, the value here in column A. So we'll select A2 for that. For the third argument, the start number, here we could specify a, a character number at which we want to start doing the search. So maybe you want to start the search at the second character, or third character, something like that. You can specify that character here. That's optional. And in this case, we're not going to specify it because we want to start at the very beginning looking from left to right. So we'll just leave that blank, close the parentheses, hit enter, and that's going to return the character number where the space is found. So this is saying that it found a space at the eighth character here. This would be the eighth character in the full name column. Same down here, this would be the sixth character after the first five characters for Clark. So we can use this now in the left function. Now before we do this, it's important to note that we're actually returning the eighth character was, is the space. And we actually want to stop at the character before that because we only really want to return the first seven characters in this case and not the space character. So for that, we can jump in, edit this formula and we'll just subtract one from the end. So I'll do that minus one there, hit enter. And now we can see that we have uh, the character before the space character. So here uh, we'll just jump into this again. I hit F2 to edit the cell. And we'll select all the text here. You can right click copy or control C. I'll escape out of that. We'll then go over here to this cell, hit F2 again to edit. And instead of the five here for the number of characters argument, we're just going to paste in the search function. So right click paste or control V, we'll paste that in there. 
And of course you can write this out all at one time. I just did it in separate cells to explain. But this now will search for that space character, find it, subtract one from that number, return that number to our left function. And when we hit enter, we can see that we get just the first name here returned in the column. All right, so now let's take a look at how to extract the last name. And for this, we're going to use the write function. You could also use the mid function here, but we'll just use the write function. It's very similar to left. So we'll start typing that here. I'm going to leave this uh, formula in here because we're actually going to use that again with our search function. So we'll start typing write. And as you can see, write returns a specified number of characters from the end of the text string. So left starts at the beginning, write starts at the end. So we'll tab into that. Write also just has two arguments here, being the text and the number of characters. So for the text, we're of course going to specify again a2, comma, and here with the number of characters, again, we want a number here. So if we just put five in this case again, just to see what happens and hit enter, you can see it's returning the five characters at the end of uh, the value in column A. And that works in some cases, but in a lot of cases it doesn't work. So again, we need to make uh, this uh, number here dynamic. And really what we need to do is do some math to figure out how many characters are in the entire text string here, and then subtract that from where we find the space character. And that will give us the number of characters that we need to the right. So I'll explain that further. And to first find the total number of characters here, we're going to use the length function or the len function. It's just len, and that's going to return the number of characters in a text string. So we'll tab into that. And here we just have one argument, which would be the text in cell A2. So we'll uh, close the parentheses, hit enter, and that's going to return the total number of characters. So now we just need to subtract uh, the, uh, where we find the search, I'm sorry, where we find the space character from with search, which would be this character here, from this number right here. And that'll give us the number of characters just for the last name, the number of characters after the space character. So we can do that. I'll just go ahead and uh, let me edit the cell here. We'll just copy and paste to make this easy. Right click copy, we'll go over here to our write function, edit this and right here, we'll first paste uh, that in there, the len function. And then I'll hit enter here. We also need the search function. And so we'll take this text here as well. Now we don't need the minus one in this case. We actually don't need that. We're not moving back to the last character in the first name we want uh, the character after the space really. So we're just going to, or the character at the space, I should say in this case. So we're just gonna copy our search function only, escape out of there. We'll jump back to this cell here and we'll say the len function minus the uh, result of the search function. So in this case, 13 minus eight would give us five. So that'll give us the uh, right five characters. We'll hit enter. And as we can see, we're getting the correct results all the way down the column. All right, so that's how we extract both the first and last names or split the text here uh, with formulas. Of course, we can clean this up a bit. We don't need this column anymore, so you can delete that one. Same with this column over here. We've combined all that into these two columns here. You wanna rename your columns here first and last, and then we have our first and last names. So let's think about some pros and cons here to this technique versus Power Query or even text to columns. One advantage here is that uh, with this, as our data changes here, we will get the results automatically updated and changed for us. The formulas will recalculate. So for example, if uh, we realize that we spelled Jennifer wrong here, maybe it has two N's instead of one N or two F's or whatever it is, and we hit enter. Once we make the change here, as you can see, our formulas recalculate and update. Both of these formulas would need to uh, recalculate and update because the space character is now in a different character within uh, the string in column A. So that's one nice advantage here. If you're doing some data entry and you're making changes here, or even if you're going down to the bottom of the table and you're adding new values at the bottom, I'll just put my name in here because I know how to type it, hit enter. Uh, as you can see here, once I put that new data in, the formulas are automatically filled down in this Excel table and I have my results right here. So this is a great advantage of using formulas, even over Power Query where we have to do a refresh uh, to see the new results. Power Query still allows us to automate this, but we will have to do a refresh to see the results. If we're using text to columns, we'd have to redo the text to columns altogether. And I explained that at the end of the video on text to columns as well. 
we basically have to redo the process uh, when we're adding data or making changes. One disadvantage of this solution is it took a while to write those formulas. They're not easy formulas necessarily. Of course, once you know the techniques, you can probably whip them out a little bit faster than I did there while explaining it. But you still have to take some time to write each of these formulas and understand how they work and maybe even do some maintenance there if they're not working properly uh, or you've changed some references or something like that. So there is some maintenance involved and time with these formulas. Another disadvantage is if you have a scenario beyond just this very simple example of first and last name only. In the video on Power Query, we looked at how to split out three names. In this case here, where sometimes we have a middle name, sometimes we don't. Uh, with Power Query, this was very easy. So I recommend checking out that video on Power Query if you haven't seen that yet. Very easy to do with Power Query. It can be done with formulas, and I'll leave that as a challenge for you. If you wanna put a comment below this video, uh, with a solution for doing this uh, split with formulas. Uh, feel free to do that. We'd love to see the different results. There's a lot of different ways to do it with formulas. It's not straightforward. And I would say just use an easier solution like Power Query if you can versus trying to uh, hack together a formula unless you absolutely need to use formulas for the reason I mentioned, which is uh, the updating here is much faster if you're doing data entry or modifying these a lot, you wanna see the results uh, very quickly. So that's the pros and cons of formulas. Still great to know that these techniques and these functions in Excel, you can use them in a lot of other places. So I hope you've learned something new here. Of course, if you have any other questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and also head over to excelcampus.com free to join our free weekly email newsletter where we share tips and tricks to help you master Excel. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.